Peace and blessings, family. This is uh, Brother Sharif with the Hour of Power. Go to Hour of Power Sharif Hamid on YouTube. Subscribe and share so we can continue to lift the mind, body, and soul of our people. Um, we have a very, very important um, interview tonight. Um, uh, my good brother, my longtime friend, um, Minister Aman Muhammad, student minister out of Durham, North Carolina and a star student of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. Um, I'm waiting for him to come on. He's going to discuss the controversial decision by Facebook and Instagram to ban Minister Farrakhan from use of uh, social media. There's my brother right there. So um, we're going to bring him on. And um, he's going to with uh, this banning of uh, Minister Farrakhan uh, from social media. Uh, so uh, for those for those listening um, um, and tuning in Facebook, I see a lot of people coming in. Uh, please hit the share button and hit watch party so we can bring more viewers into the message. Uh, hey, Salam, Minister Aman. Salam, how's the brother? All right, can, All right. You, can you hear me okay? Yes, sir. I was, following, right, right, right. Yes, sir, I was following your instructions and trying to share. Right. right. Yes, sir. Yes, uh, so we, we're, asking we're asking people tuning in to uh, hit, uh, hit the share, the button, share button and then hit watch party. That brings more, more viewers into the, into the message. Yes, I see. So we have, so we have uh, Minister, Minister Amon on from, from uh, Dorm, North, North Carolina. North Carolina. A long, uh, long time student of the uh, Minister, Minister Louis, Louis Farrakhan and the Nation, Nation of Islam. Uh, so, uh, so he's going to uh, give, uh, give him the floor in a couple seconds here. And, um, and um, he's going to discuss this uh, decision, decision by Facebook, by Facebook to, uh, to ban the minister and, and others uh, from, uh, from use from the worldwide, worldwide social media site. site. Uh, but, uh, but mainly we're here to talk about our brother, Minister Farrakhan. Um, so, I'll so I'll open up as I usually do, and we'll jump right into it, because I know you're a busy man. Um, are you hearing some feedback on your end, Minister Amon? No, sir. Um, everything's clear on my end. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Um, as always, uh, yeah, someone says they're hearing an echo. Maybe that'll go away. Um, as always, in the name of God, the gracious, the merciful, we give him, we give him praise and thanks for his mercy and his goodness to the human family. If all the trees upon the earth were pens the right way, and if all the oceans were ink, and then another seven oceans died to its supply, the writing would still not be enough to explain the glory of God, for he's the exalted, all powerful, all wise. We confide in no other in our time of need, and we praise no other in our good fortune. He is one. So once again, this is Brother Sharif with the Hour of Power. Go to Hour of Power. Sharif Hamid on YouTube. Subscribe and share so we can continue to lift the mind, body, and soul of our people. Um, Minister Amon, can you uh, briefly um, introduce yourself, brother? Yes, sir. <clears throat> My name is uh, Student Minister Amon Muhammad. I uh, am here in Durham, North Carolina. Uh, at Muhammad Mosque number 34, I've had the honor and privilege for, of representing the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan for uh, many uh, years now with Allah's help and by his permission. And um, a brother in the work trying to help him in the great task of the resurrection of our people. Yes. Yes. That's a long, That's a long time friend of mine, a beautiful, beautiful family, and you're doing great work down there in uh, North, North Carolina. Um, so, um, we're so we're going to jump right into, right into it, brother. Uh, what, what, what is your, what is your um, assessment, assessment of uh, this, this controversial decision of Facebook, Facebook the worldwide social media site of uh, banning the minister from use of, use of uh, Facebook, uh, Facebook and Instagram? And Instagram. Yes, sir, brother. <clears throat> well, first, um, I, I want to, <clears throat> again, thank you for uh, your hard work and what you do in uh, sh using your platform on uh, Facebook to always give the public uh, very important um, information. So we are privileged and, and happy and honored to be a part 
of the program so that we would have an opportunity to share a few of our thoughts on um, what is happening during this time. First, I have to say that we are not surprised by the act of uh, Facebook and Instagram um, executed by Mr. Zuckerberg, but we are quite aware that there are more hands involved uh, in this matter than just his. We had, uh, uh, just yesterday, we were out, um, as we do very often, out with our national publication, the Final Call newspaper, and literally, um, for, all, for you and all of your listeners, it's important to know that the entire time that we were out, uh, people coming out of their homes, people coming from everywhere, people rolling down their windows and their cars when we made it out to the streets to, to express their insult, to express their disgust of going to their telephones or going to uh, their laptops or computer screens only to be informed that the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan was banned. And look at the language, not paid, suspended, uh, not is something going on temporarily, no, but banned. And then to see that in the news, people were very, very, very angry. And they uh, all, I mean, everybody was telling us how insulted and angry that they were that the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan would be lumped in with the likes of others that really, I won't even take the time to mention their name, but almost as if he was some uh, political figure or some uh, pol political leader, of which he is not. He is a divinely inspired man, a spiritual man, and most importantly, a good man that many millions rely on for right guidance. So everybody was expressing their disgust. And that was coming, of course, from our community, the black, the brown, the red, and the yellow. And yes, even many whites stopped us to express that they uh, were very angry because they viewed it as a um, infringement upon our rights of free speech, and they could see the handwriting on the wall. Right, right. Um, it's, 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 this uh, this uh, language, language that they use, dangerous, dangerous and, and racist, is racist speech. speech. Um, um, do you know, do you know where they're getting the origin of this from? from? I mean, I mean Mr. Farrakhan's, Mr. Farrakhan's been using Facebook, Facebook for as long as it's, it's been, been, been in existence, right? right? Well, not not since uh, not since its existence, but many many of his followers we had. So, you know, even before the minister got on Facebook, Instagram, uh, Twitter, even before he uh, had an official page on these platforms, he's had followers uh, and supporters who have always shared his messages. It has been in recent times that the enemy has been moving and working to try to get his uh, pages removed because the interaction with the public. And what I mean by that, the, the shares and the uh, comments Anybody that's paying attention at all will see that the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan's social media pages, no matter what is shared, is always lively, always spot on. So there are many moves now um, that this country is trying to make that the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan's voice is really in truth the only real major voice that is affecting this country and affecting the world as to many of the negative terms that 
America wants to make. So this has been in the works for quite some time. Um, so again, as I said earlier, we're not surprised, but they had to do work and make complaints and uh, use um, organizations such as the Southern Poverty Law Center, which is a group that many um, organizations and many um, city councils and state governments and others use to try to justify that we are some hate group or hate organization. So again, there are many hands that are involved, but the ultimate aim is to do the very best that they can to get a man such as the minister's voice out from among the, the masses who are fastly and quickly learning that he's the voice that they should be look, listening to for their next steps. Right. right. Well, 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 I hope you're not about to ban me because it's a huge echo with my voice, but yours is okay. <laughs> um, I'm pretty sure they're aware of what that uh, power is doing. But, um, as far as you understand, what what is uh, the consequences of him being banned? So if I wanted to share um, a message from the minister, that, that would be banned too? Well, not as of yet, my brother. Uh, we, um, including myself, probably since I, I read of this and went to my uh, pages to see this, um, we've been working literally almost around the clock, you know, with very little sleep, very little rest, sharing as much as we, as we can. You know, the ultimate aim in silencing him is not only to silence him but to work to try to silence the witnesses that can testify to what he has been doing and to share other people that can share um things that would have you know there's so much out there that uh, you can still share from um on youtube um our own platforms at, uh, of course at noi.org and um, so there is an effort by as many people possible to share, to share, to share, to share everything that you have or you come across. And they're going to have a hard time, but we are letting them know that you can't silence him because we are all Minister Farrakhan. We are all Farrakhan. So that's what we're doing now, sharing as much as we can and asking everybody else to share, to share, to share his guidance. Right. right. So, so, so as far as you know, when they, when they say, say they're, they're banning, banning because I'm, I'm still trying to understand, understand this, this and I'm the most, most technical savvy, savvy. What, what, what is it exactly that they're, that they're banning, banning then if we can, we can share his message? Because so let's say he did a message, message today. today. They may ban it live, but, but if I, if come, I come back and share it, how is that, that really banned? Banned? Yes. Well, brother, you know, the, the first step is to actually ban his page. You know, um, his okay. page, his, his uh, uh, official Facebook page, or used to be official uh, Facebook page, an official Instagram page, is the primary source that many people use to share his information that's that's number one uh number two you know they are working to try to figure out how to um permanently ban not just him but those who share uh tons and tons of content you know a lot of times you may see or read um at different times uh, people talking about being in Facebook jail or something like that or being reported. I, I mean, I often get myself uh, reports on these uh, platforms about, oh, you have been reported for this, you have been reported for that. And many of us have had 30-day bans and different types uh, of bans where in which you can't, you can't interact with uh, your followers, uh, they can't see you, you can't see them, 
um, until Facebook decides that according to whatever your punishment is, the, um, you can't, you can't, um, you can try, but I mean, no, I mean, nobody can see what you're, you're doing. So with that being said, as they work to try to ban more and ban others, which is their ultimate aim, what will happen is when people look on these threads um, where somebody's information that they share used to be, it'll be, it'll literally be blank. There'll be nothing, there'll be nothing there. So the best thing people can do at this time, again, is everybody to share as much as they can on Facebook and Instagram. But both of these platforms are well aware already who are, who's sharing, um, or who are primary sharers of the minister's message. Okay. Okay. I see. I see. I see how it works, how it works now. now. Absolutely. Um, um, to your knowledge, is there any particular speech or message that he's given, or is this, like you said, going back as far as they can, um, just saying, oh, this is racist talk or it's dangerous? Let me, uh, I'm, I'm, as you're talking, I'm still listening, but I'm trying to pull up a particular article that uh, his national assistant, student minister Ishmael Muhammad, lifted just today that, uh, here it is. This, now listen to this, you and, and your, your listeners, my brother. Uh, this article is dated December 30th, uh, tw 2017, um, in The Intercept. And it says, Facebook says it's deleting accounts at the direction of U.S. and Israeli governments. In September of last year, we noted that Facebook representatives were meeting with the Israeli government to determine which Facebook accounts of Palestinians should be deleted on the ground that they uh, constituted incitement. The meetings called for and presided over by one of the most extremist and authoritarian Israeli officials, pro-settlement justice minister Eilat Shaki came after Israel threatened Facebook that its failure to voluntarily comply with Israeli deletion orders would result in the enactment of laws requiring Facebook to do so. Uh, upon pain of being severely fined or even blocked in the country. The predictable results of those meetings are now clear and well documented. Ever since Facebook has been on a censorship rampage against Palestinian activists who protest the decades-long illegal Israeli occupation, all directed and determined by Israeli officials. Indeed, Israeli officials have been publicly boasting about how obedient Facebook is when it comes to Israeli censorship orders. So part of what this article and is much more here to be read is showing you that at the behest of not only the U.S. government, the U.S. government and the Israeli government, they are moving literally Facebook it, it, that also owns Instagram is literally moving to ban literally free speech, free thought, things that could be um, uh, interfere with their objectives. It is no secret to anyone who hardly is on the internet in social media to, to see and to hear how the minister has been uh, constantly lied on and referred to as anti-Semitic. So this is, uh, w this is done purposefully to set the stage so that it can be justified to ban a man's message who clearly is the most listened to leader, period, in the world. And this is just a way to do it because with his voice present in the world, there are many things that just won't be able to be pulled over on the masses. 
And I, I pretty much know the answer to my next question because I listen to the minister. I've been a friend of the nation of Islam for the past 20 years, as long as I've been Muslim. But in all his messages, whether you agree with him or not, He's never He's called, called for anyone, for anyone to be hurt and never called for any violence against any, against any group, group and particularly the Jews. Is that, is, that, is that correct? Brother, you you are absolutely, absolutely correct. Brother, you know, when they say inciting violence, this is a big, big, big lie. Look at look at our people who work at these jobs and people are troubling them, lying on them, not making sure that they get their credit for jobs that you do every day, denying you advancement, uh, discriminating against you in all forms in the workplace, discriminating against our people and abusing our people in the schools, in the police force, in the military. If anything, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan has prevented violence because people are so fed up at the ill treatment that we receive in America that many times it is his voice, it is his voice that they can see on their cell phone, that they can pull up on their computer. And listening to Minister Farrakhan has saved many many people uh, because they probably would have had a violent reaction. The minister is a man who, who's, who's been time tested. He's not a man who incites violence. He's a man who incites love in the hearts of his people for each other and he inspires us. He inspires us more than anyone to, if we are in, in, engaging in some act of senseless violence, you're inspired, you're encouraged not to go in that direction. So to lump him with anyone who uh, causes that is an absolute falsehood. I recently saw, as we have seen many, 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 we try to share their, those as well, many of our uh, brothers and sisters who uh, celebrities as well who are lifting up their voices to express their disgust and our brother uh, brother DL Hughley I saw uh, on his um, Instagram page I believe how he shared a post talking about the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan being the only person to lead over a million men to Washington DC and after the event not only was there no uh, uh, acts of violence at all, that these men, we actually left no mess, cleaned up behind ourselves, left D.C. clean. But the marchers who came to Charlottesville brought torches, destruction, and actually killed a young woman. So to lump us and to lump him with that type of activity is absolute foolishness and cannot be proven because it's simply not true. That's a, that's a, that's a very good, that's a very good point. Um, what do you think the aim is of them? Well, you kind of answered it. Do you think they're trying to uh, make it seem like they're not picking up on Minister Farrakhan by lumping him in with Alex Jones? And I'm not sure of the other individuals. But you know, uh, plans devil's advocate, they would say, hey, we're trying to rid Facebook of anyone with hate speech or inciting violence because it isn't just about Minister Farrakhan. Yeah. It's about other people. <laughs> yes, sir. Well, brother, you know, you raise a good point. And, and here's the deal. The people, because of the teachings of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad, because of the stellar example of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, the people are so much wiser. The people can see through this uh, feeble attempt to trick them, to uh, make them believe that, oh, we're just doing this 
out of fairness. Nobody believes that because this is something that he's been teaching and representing uh, for so long. Now, all of a sudden, he's dangerous. All of a sudden, you know, brother, my, 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 uh, my 18 year old daughter the other day, we were having a conversation and she raised a good point. She said, not only are these people evil, they don't even demonstrate any respect. Here's a man, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, who in just a few days will be 86 years old. He has no criminal record. He's never been arrested. Minister Farrakhan is a good man. And at, uh, you know, at the least, he should be, of, whether you agree or disagree, he should be afforded a, a, a high level of respect just as an elder. So she said, how is it that these people who claim to be good people would attack a man and call a man dangerous who is nearly 90 years old? At least you should give the man his respect. But to say that, that shows you that they're deeply threatened. They're deeply concerned over the message that the minister is raising. And this is what has them disturbed because the armor minister, Louis Farrakhan, is the most constant and consistent leader that we have as a people and that anybody who is oppressed, he is the best spokesman that you can have and he has been, again, as I said earlier, time-tested, and uh, his leadership has uh, spanned for decades. For decades, brother. Here's a man who not only spoke and lifted and gave guidance uh, at our brother's service, uh, just, I think, in 2017, if I'm not mistaken, our brother, Prodigy of Mob Deep, right? But he also spoke at the services of our brother, Brother David Ruffin, and touched many hearts. Now, look at that, brother. Look at the span. Look at the love. Look at his ability to touch. And, of course, we know that although he did not speak, but look at his presence and the effect of his presence at our beloved and beautiful sister, Aretha Franklin's uh, homegoing service. And afterwards, how he articulated and explained how she was gifted to us and their relationship and how when the mosque was attacked in 1972, how she was one of the first people to show up in his office, want to know, Brother Farrakhan, what can I do to help? And if you fast forward from then, Brother, all the way up to present day as our brother was just in L.A. at the services of our beloved brother, Nipsey Hussle. Again, offering guidance, giving understanding, showing the artistic community that they are the real leaders at this time. I'm just saying all of that to say. Brother, the minister literally has nothing else to prove. This man has given us 64 years of consistent uh, guidance and sacrifice. And he is not an inciter of hatred or violence because in 64 years, if he was any of that, we would have some record or some instance. And we just don't have it because it's simply not true. Yes, very, yes, well, very stated. well stated. Very well, very well stated, stated, brother. brother. That's, why that's why I brought that, that up. up. Um, I've been, I've been listening, listening to minister for at least, for at least 25, 25 years of my life. I've never, I've never heard him say anything, say anything about, about violence, violence or anything. He's telling, He's telling us about, about peace. peace. Um, not just not Muslims. That's not, right. not just black people. people. But the humankind. But they're trying to switch the narrative. Um, do you think, do you think uh, the, the recent of uh, Favors Day passage? Day passage? Um, I, see um, I see them trying to put a lot of, a lot of uh, uh, emphasis on that. that. Do you think that was the last, last straw with them, with them so, so to speak? Well, you know, 
not just this Savior's Day message, but if you recall, if you go back to not just Savior's Day 28, uh, 2019, all the way back to Savior's Day 2018, the enemy has not uh, yielded yet. He has not uh, relented yet in his campaign of making sure that he keeps in front of the people trying to convince the people that this man is vile and this man is an inciter of hatred. He's, he's not uh, eased up in the last year and a half. Uh, not only from that message, but trying to lift up anything that he can find and he's angry. Here's the thing that we, everybody has to understand. The enemy is angry because everything that we've been working for to raise the consciousness of the people is beginning to gain traction. So when you look at the timing, see, every time the minister opens his mouth, Every time that we share a tweet, every time that we share something from Facebook, every time we share something from uh, Instagram, every time we do that, that's the last straw. Because it inspires people to say, hey, wait a minute. This is, something's not right here. And if that keeps going, if that keeps increasing, then people will begin to make bold decisions based on the increase of knowledge, the increase of uh, in understanding of the hand that is over the hand of most of the decisions made by the federal government, down to our state governments, down to our city governments. Brother, you're aware um, uh, just uh, last year of the international attention that our city, Durham, North Carolina, gained simply because the city council said, uh, we don't want any uh, foreign training of our police. Um, we don't think it's necessary. And especially, we don't think it's necessary to have the idea for the Israeli Defense Force to train our police. That's justified. It was a good decision. But ever since that decision was made, every week, Every month, there's something popping up. Many of them have now been sued. The city has been sued. There's all kind of articles coming out trying to undermine those or anybody attached to the decision. And one of the things that I read on the Internet, and myself and many believers here, we have also been falsely uh, lambasted in the same media, uh, them raising these issues, but at the root of it is what? As one of the articles that I read and somebody wrote in the comments section, Minister Louis Farrakhan and the Nation of Islam has too much influence in Durham, North Carolina. So, brother, again, this is the problem. The enemy has the work that he must do, and really, there really are no real threats. I just have to be honest. The only real threat that exists that causes the people, and I'm not talking about the higher ups, I'm talking about the masses, the people that can make a difference. It is Minister Louis Farrakhan that the people are beginning to listen to more and more every day, and they can't afford, Brother Sharif, they can't afford to have his voice in such a broad way, reaching such a broad audience. As you know, working with young people as you do, almost on a daily basis, brother, most of our young people are not in the church. Most of them are not in the mosque. Most of them, really in fact about it, may not even hang out at school too much. So their phones, their uh, computers or what they have on and keeping up with things, that's their primary source of information. So think about af after the great sacrifice of our brother, brother uh, Nipsey Hussle, look how immediately afterwards, 
when it looked like the whole thing in the whole West Coast would be in disarray? Look at the guidance of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. Look at how the beautiful brothers and sisters in the Los Angeles area came and their very presence brought a calming spirit to the situation. And when the minister who ventured out to Los Angeles, who really, really is the only leader who, who went, who showed up, who offered any guidance. Look at the response, the beautiful response from those who they call gangs that we call street organizations. They began immediately instituting peace treaties. They began immediately talking about how can we keep going forward to keep moving in the direction that our brother, Brother Nipsey Hussle, had moved us in and many were sharing memes and still are in posts talking about these uh, seven books that you should read that will help you in your quest to do something for self and be of consequence in your community, two of which were books by the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad, How to Eat the Live and Message to the Black Man. So again, why at this time, when you have so many people, and from those who were watching in LA, we started reading of reports of those in Chicago, those in Baltimore, people coming from all over the world saying, you know what, we're gonna tie our flags together. We're going to come together. Now, wait a minute. Now is the time that the minister's voice should be out there. But you know what, brother? This move shows and proves that the enemy doesn't want good for our people. He does not want our brothers and sisters to cease and desist in killing our own selves and beginning to pool our resources, as many of them now are talking about buy black and buy, buy back the block. So there's much to the timing of this ban, but do understand that this has been in the works for quite some time and that the people should stand up and tweet and share and reshare, make your videos and let the world know how the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan has touched your life. It is millions of people who have been affected by what he has done and his example and what he teaches, and you should stand up and let it be known. It is the common man and woman who may think that, oh, I can't make a difference, but you have the greatest voice. And let me say this, brother, because I don't want to take up all of your time because I know you have much to do as well. Look and just reflect over, we can't even quantify how many leaders that the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan in their hour of trouble, in their hour of distress, whether they agreed fully and many of these people that he has come to their aid over the years have talked about him, dogged him out, they are now under obligation to reciprocate that love and care because they know that Minister Farrakhan is a good man. So the masses, brother, are standing up. The common man and common woman are standing up. But you who are in leadership, you who are uh, uh, in uh, government leadership, uh, that's political leadership, those of you in spiritual leadership, you owe the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, a dignified response in letting these people know that this man is not what most of you uh, uh, are having to listen to as they claim he is. Most of you know that the minister is not this and you're obligated. If you're a good person, you're obligated to overcome your fear and stand up and let the world know that this man is a good man. That's what you should do. Very well stated, brother. And just to set the record straight, as a um, 
religious group, so to speak. The nation of Islam doesn't even um, agree with carrying weapons. Is that correct? Yes, sir, brother. That's that's correct. And that is really a known fact. Um, that's not a secret. You know, that's not a secret. We don't believe in uh, carrying weapons, not so much as a pen knife. And I could never even try to take a guess at how many people have visited Muhammad Mosques of Islam uh, for the last uh, 88 years. But when you come, you know that you uh, are checked. We have a check procedure. And it's known that we don't bring anything, not even uh, any contraband, uh, cigarettes, cigarette lighters, none of that. Millions of people, brother, know this. They know that we are great lovers and spreaders of peace. This is no secret. It's only an aim and work and effort of the enemy to try to get a few people who have not had this experience yet to come into the deceitful knowledge that we wish uh, somebody harm or we in here trying to, um, you know, incite violence. And that is far from the truth. And people that know that, you know, you don't have to write a, a book or feel like, well, I don't know what to say. Share your experience. Share what you know of truth. There are so many people that even just what you inbox us, even what you have inboxed me, share it publicly so that everybody can see the good, the tremendous good that the minister and those of us who sincerely follow him have offered here in the United States of America and abroad. Yes, indeed. Do you want to uh, share with uh, the viewers how they can tune into the uh, webcast every day? Yes, sir. Absolutely. When, <clears throat> excuse me, brother, on, uh, all you have to do is every Sunday at, um, well, 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, 10 a.m. Central Standard Time, you go to www.noi.org, www.noi.org. That is a uh, publicly shared webcast. Again, all of this foolishness about us being secretive or being a cult. What cult has webcasts that everybody can tune in on and you can chime in and lift things and ask questions and get responses? So you should participate. And anybody that wants to know what the Nation of Islam teaches, you can visit every week, like clockwork, www.noi.org. And if you're blessed to have or be in an area that has a mosque or study group, you can attend and you will find that the same thing is being taught openly and publicly, not in secret, all over, not just America, but the world. So we invite you to please tune in every Sunday at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time and 10 a.m. Central Standard Time. And I should also, brother, let you know, as we uh, found out a little bit earlier today, on this Thursday at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time, uh, Father uh, Michael Flager of St. Sabina Catholic Church in Chicago, Illinois, has uh, requested and opened up his Catholic Church. Now, Father Flager is a, a, a priest, a Catholic priest, who in his church, when you go there and it's beautiful, has a black Jesus and mural on the wall, and he tells everybody and anybody 
who would listen to him that as a Caucasian man, minister, a Caucasian Christian man, by the way, Minister Farrakhan is his brother and he loves him, seeks his counsel, and he was so angry. He said, I got to do something to help uh, the nation get this word out about what this man is and what he's doing. So there's going to be, um, on this Thursday, again, it's 7 p.m. Central Standard Time, that would be 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, there's going to, and this will be webcast, you will be able to view it, there will be, uh, we will be giving our uh, official statement, and also we will be giving uh, what we would call marching orders that we will be able to share with all of the listeners what our next steps should be and how we should proceed going forward because they told us here in this country, they said we were free. They said we had the right to freedom of expression. That's what they said. But we know that God has given us the right of freedom, justice, and equality, and we will not be muzzled, we will not be silenced, and just, I would just say, make sure that you tune in so you can find out how you can be a part of what our next steps will be concerning this ill treatment and mistreatment of the minister in the Nation of Islam. Indeed, brother. Indeed, brother. And, um, and um, I, I, um, I implore anyone who's uh, listening or who catches this on a replay to do like the nation always asks us to do to listen, is to do your own research. This term that they have been um, labeling the minister with for many, many years, um, anti-Semitic, is uh, being used in a very tricky way. Uh, a, semite, a semite, by their, by their own, own definition, is any, is any ethnic, ethnic family, family from Hebrew, from Hebrew Arabic, Aramaic, or the Ethiopic, the Ethiopic family. family. Yeah. So, so a semite, a semite isn't just a Jew. A Jew. It's, from it's from Hebrew, Hebrew Aramaic, Aramaic, and the in the African, African family. family. All you got to do, you gotta is, do look is look it up in the dictionary. In the dictionary. That's, what a, That's what a semite is. is. So, so someone who is being mistreated um, and, they're um, and they're from, from the, the, if they're from Arabia, Arabia or Ethiopia or Hebrew, or Hebrew how come someone don't say that being anti-Semitic? How, how come only when Jews, Jews are being mistreated, are they, are they saying this is anti-Semitism? By their own definition, a Semite is a large family from almost anyone in the Middle Eastern um, area. So we need so we to look up their own definitions and them to apply it to the whole family, the whole Semite family. It isn't just, it isn't just you, by their, by their own definition. Yes. Yes. That's a fact, brother. And, you know, it's not only here. I know things that are happening here is happening everywhere. But just a week or so ago, we were uh, with Minister Paul Scott and a few others at the um, Durham County uh, Board of Education meeting. And it was so much that was said, and many of the speakers, by the way, that came there to speak about the negative effects and what was going on with our children in the school, none of these people had planned before to be, uh, I would say, in, in succession of each other saying the same thing, but that's what happened. How the prison, uh, the school to prison pipeline, how it happens, how it's orchestrated. And our brother, when it was his time to speak, he raised the issue of why, uh, should we be silent when there's a bill being introduced? Now, this is in uh, North Carolina, what I'm talking about in, in, in Durham County, to make an uh, effort to have it made mandatory 
that all the schools will have to teach on the Holocaust. Now, this is happening, brother, as we speak. And you know, and I know, that Minister Paul has been back and forth down there for years, lifting up the need for our children to be taught our history and the positive effect that it would have on our children, only to be rebuffed meeting after meeting, excuse made here and made there. And now, as we speak, this is being considered. So we're not saying that, oh, you must pull that, you can't teach the Holocaust in the school. We didn't, we're not saying that, but what we are saying is, if you are going to teach that, if you're going to try to teach the young people why they should honor the Jewish people, why they should have respect for the Jewish people because of what was done to them, that was not just, that was mean-spirited, that was evil, and the subsequent discrimination that came behind it, so that they will have an understanding and not misjudge why certain so-called Jews may seem sensitive, but it's because of what they went through. If you want to make that mandatory, then how dare you not teach in the schools? What was done to us? See, these are the many things going on that are not so subtle that shows that nobody wants to acknowledge our suffering. Nobody wants to acknowledge our pain. Everybody wants us to brush it off. And what people are indirectly saying when they talk like this is, all life is more valuable than a black life, up to and including even the animal life. Even plant life, they would rather fight for forests and trees and bushes before somebody will stand up for the black man and black woman. So that's why as long as God gives me breath, I'm going to use that breath to make sure I can tell everybody that, I, that will listen to the sound of my voice, my voice, you have somebody. You got a champion in Minister Farrakhan. You got somebody that's not going to forget about what you need and what our people need, and his knees are not going to bow, and you don't have to worry about him going behind closed doors and saying one thing to us and then going making some bum deal where we come up with the short end of the stick behind the doors. No, Minister Farrakhan is a man that you can trust, and you can believe in, and that's why the enemy doesn't want you to hear him, don't want you to listen to him, because it might inspire you, hell, it will inspire you to see an 85-year-old man uh, roaring like a lion that has many years left in front of him if it is the will of God. So, brother, I hate to, you know, go down that street, but it's just so much, so much that anybody listening, if they're honest, they will bear witness that nobody cares about us and we're going to have to do something for ourselves. And the minister is the man who will get more people to realize that faster than any other leader on the planet. And after realizing it, God has made him such a beautiful and attractive figure that he can galvanize the goodwill of the people who are willing to do something after being pointed out what is wrong and what is right. So I implore everyone, you know, if you have a little disagreement here or there, you need to get over that because not only is he under attack, we are under attack and you are under attack. And before you know it, they'll be coming for you next. Never forget, they just didn't want to murder Jesus. They wanted to murder Jesus, and they also wanted to get rid of who? Lazarus. Because Lazarus was a witness of what the power that Jesus had in him, and the words that he had in his mouth, the power that he had to raise the dead. So they just didn't want to get rid of Jesus. They wanted to get rid of Lazarus because Lazarus was the proof 
that Jesus was in fact sent by and was the Son of God. So let's not forget this and don't you sit idly by and be silent while a good man is being drugged through the mud and you know better. You know better. Right, right, brother. Right, brother. Um, you would think that, that finishing out, you would think, you would that, think they that they would learn from the, the uh, cliche, uh, curiosity, curiosity kills the cat, the cat. connecting that, that to them banning the minister from, from Facebook. I believe it was a, a story out there that they said during the, I think the Second World War, that they would tell people in Vietnam, I believe, if you be with a black man at midnight, he would grow a tail, thinking that would push the women away from him. That made them want to be with him more. During 9-11, they thought that that was going to bury Islam. Yes. More people started getting books about Islam, and more uh, white Americans start converting to Islam after 9-11, and they thought that that box plan or whatever that was yes. was going to bury Islam, Islam and turn everyone against it yes. when it increased their curiosity. Yes. So what they're trying, trying to ban the minister, don't they know that more people are going to say, well, what is it, what is it about this man? And then he's the same one that got, got, got not one but two million to come to, to, come to uh, Washington, D.C.? Yes. One, one, one of my relatives, they used to take drugs, they used to beat women. Now they, now they respect women. I may not, I may not understand all the concepts, but they look to be a better man, better woman. Yes. Yes. That's what you asked for. Yes. Well, you know, as, as our Christian brothers and sisters would say, it all works for the good. It all works for the good. And these people are so uh, off spiritually that the result is blindness. And the real fact of the matter is, no matter what you do against us, you can't stop us. No matter what you do, you are only helping us. If you do good, you are helping us. If you do evil against us, you are helping us. If you decide, well, I'll just be neutral and I don't do anything, well, guess what? You're helping us. It is the time of the rise of the black man and woman here in the wilderness of North America and for us to take our rightful place as rulers in the earth. This is God's will. It's not our will. It's not man's will. If it was, maybe some of these futile attempts would work. But the mere fact that no matter what they have thrown, at the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, no matter what they have thrown at his teacher, the honorable minister Louis Farrakhan, and he has many witnesses, and I will bear witness myself that no matter what you throw at us, our students, yet we still remain victorious. So that should tell everybody who's paying even a little attention, what is the force, what is the power that backs the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. He's not self sent and he does not ever go anywhere at any time teaching anything to anyone representing it as though it's from himself. So we should pay very close attention to the two that he says backs him because evidently they have power to make a difference. So again, I pledge my support to him and to stand with him because in the 27 years, almost 28 years that I've been with him, I bear witness that he has helped me, guided me aright, and has made me a better man and my family a better family and a good family, knowing what we should do and how we should be. And I would just invite anybody, you don't, you, you go see for yourself, study for yourself, experience for yourself. And as you said, Brother Sharif, people are coming as we had people to come today. And those who uh, may be watching, who attend here will bear witness. People were coming today because they said, man, I got to see what's going on because I know this is not right. I've been returning telephone calls all week. 
people want to know, well, what do I have to do to come down there? I want to hear what y'all talking about. Now, how do I dress? I mean, do I have to wear a suit when I come down there? I mean, we've actually, brother, had emails and telephone calls of people saying, man, I'm tired of this world. One of the brothers came today, said, man, I'm just ready to join. What do I do? Where do I join, man? I want to stand with Farrakhan. So enemy, please keep doing what you're doing. Please keep doing your work because all you're doing is inspiring the righteous to finally stand up and bear witness that we'll never get a fair shake in this country. So we might as well unite with each other and take what we need to do for ourselves right now and make those moves. So again, brother, I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. And I pray that Allah continues to bless you and your beautiful uh, family and them strong sons you got to be uh, keep going up and standing up strong as their father is standing up. And as a people, brother, we're going to be fine. Just don't get weary. Don't get weak. And those of you who are still doubting, I pray for you that you will live a few more years. That you will be able to see and bear witness that God loves you. He loves you. He loves you. And he wants to give you a chance. Everybody else has had their chance. God wants to give you a chance to sit in the ruler's, ruler's seat. So please keep living so that you can get a chance to experience the rise of our people in its completeness. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Brother, brother, um, brother Mon, Mon, do you have uh, time to take, to take a, a quick question from one of, one of the viewers? Yes. Sure. Okay, okay. Uh, brother, brother um, Blackwell, Blackwell says, says how does, How does one deal, deal with one who wishes death on a great minister? Well, brother, I will say this right away. You should get away from that person as far as from the east unto the west, if you are able. Because you will find that the minister is God's servant. And if you pay close attention, everything of evil that people wish for him comes on them. This is an actual fact. Those of those are uh, those persons who say disparaging things about him, and I wish he would do this, and I hope he uh, dies, and and some of them even say these crazy things about us. Sometimes they don't end up. In a good end, I won't, you know, go into eh, no name calling and things like this. But those who are from uh, an area which I'm originally from will, if you go do a little uh, digging, due diligence, you will bear witness that this is the truth. There uh, were many detractors and those who spoke ill of us and against the minister because we tried and continue to do some work for black uh, people in our hometown in Reesville, and there happened to be a woman who she was going to uh, my pages and uh, our uh, mosque pages and our uh, Black Family Day pages, just just viewing, uh, um, just spreading venom and just saying all types of evil things. Well, at a certain point, the people got tired of listening to her and they started engaging her telling her why don't you back up why don't you leave them alone until finally her real true colors came out and she started speaking very evilly against us and our work against me against minister farcon against the nation of islam and dropping f-bombs and everything calling for our end she wasn't banned they never pulled her page. They never stopped her. But she outright called for something that happened to us. And recently, I saw a news report that this same person, not by our hands, by, but by one who was living in her home, raised up on her and killed her, killed her brother, and made an attempt to kill the mother who didn't die at that time, but later she passed. We didn't 
call for that. We didn't desire that. But I'm telling you, as much as I'm sitting in this chair, you should be very careful of how you speak evilly of that man. Not that we're necessarily going to come looking for you, but things that come into these people's lives that do that, watch what God does for them in their life. So people, they call for the death of the minister, I feel sorry for you because you're going to be in bad shape. And you know what? What God visits in your life for calling something evil against his servant, you will have called it to yourself. It won't be because of us. So, you know, um, I hate that the brother would have to deal with that. I hope it's not in uh, somebody in his physical uh, presence. But even if it's something maybe in social media or something, if you know him, I'd avoid him. I'd block him. Man, they're, they're, not, they're not well at all. And there have been a few little in, um, engagements online and people that uh, I wouldn't say is an argument, but I've had some very interesting discussions this week. And one of the things that I've seen, unfortunately, is what many of you already know, the greatest disease in our community as black folk is heart disease. And I'm not just talking about heart disease from that bad food and that pork and the things that we should not eat. I'm talking about the disease of envy. I'm talking about the rottenness of some of our hearts that you desire and wish that you could do some of the things that he's doing. But in some of us, you're actually uh, envious of the love that the people have for the minister, and but you have not made any of the sacrifices. This man has sacrificed everything for our people, and most of us are not willing to make the types of sacrifices that is required, and the, we don't have thick enough skin to deal with the rejection and how your own people will lie on you and give misinformation and just false uh, statements on what your intentions are. And you have to take a lot when you uh, deal with our people. And most of us, we're just not there. And we're not willing even to enter into a process that prepares you and helps you to develop the capacity to deal with your own people. So that heart disease, that disease of envy, Work to rid yourself of that disease that disallows you to accept that this is the man that God has chosen for this time. And we should help him, not try to rival him, not try to rob him of the affection of the people, which you cannot do. Find a way to help him because his work will enable all of us to be. You still there, Minister Amon? Well, I guess he was giving a little bit too much truth, but um, we're a little bit over our time with the hour of power. He, um, Looks like I lost my brother there, um, but just in the hour of power Sharif Hamid on YouTube. Yeah, he's all the way lost now. Subscribe and share so we can continue to lift the mind, body, and soul um, of our people. Um, Ramadan is upon us, the month in which Muslims fast um, for 30 days during daylight hours. No food, no drink, no sexual activity. We try to stay away from negative, vain talk like he talked about. Um, that's called the month of Ramadan. Um, so we will fast for the next 30 days. It just started at um, dusk, I believe, if not now, tomorrow. Again, we fast for daylight hours, um, during the daylight hours until the sun sets 
um, no food, no drink, and it's called Ramadan. So do your research on that. It's a very blessed time for Muslims and spiritual people. Um, yes, we uh, we lost uh, Minister Aman there, um, but uh, that's our talk and our uh, for tonight. Uh, please share this message um, about Facebook banning Minister Farrakhan from uh, the social media site for supposed being dangerous and um, racist and inflammatory speeches. I am not um, a member of the Nation of Islam, even though I'm Muslim. For those who don't know the difference, it's no different than Christianity. You can be Christian, but you can be Baptist, Methodist, Lutheran. So it's many different sects and denominations of Islam. I'm not a member of the Nation of Islam, although I'm Muslim, but I have been a friend of the Nation of Islam for many, many years. And if it wasn't for the teachings of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad, passed down to Minister Farrakhan, and of course, uh, Minister Malcolm X, uh, I don't know where I would be in my development as a man, and especially a black man in America. I love Minister Farrakhan, as they say, from here to the moon and back. Um, the influence that he has had in my life, I cannot even begin to quantify it. Um, in a week from now, this man will be 86 years old. So we pray and I pray that God continues to bless him. Uh, Yes, uh, our brother got dropped, but he, 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 he laid it down. And Minister Amon is one of his star students. And I know, and I hope somehow, some way, that um, Minister Farrakhan, Minister Ishmael Muhammad, who is the national representative of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, I hope they get this message so they can see the great representation of the Nation of Islam by my close friend, Aman Muhammad out of Moss 34 in Durham, North Carolina. Please tune in this Wednesday, May the 8th, on Channel 16 Local Access TV if you're here in Pennsylvania and streaming live on Facebook is the Hour of Power where in, we'll interview three sisters who are running for York City um, School Board and uh, listen out for uh, the podcast that we have. Ramadan Mubarak, which means Blessed Ramadan, I, play, I pray that all the Muslims around the world who are fasting, you have a blessed Ramadan. And uh, Allah tells us, God tells us that Satan is locked up this month. He is locked up and we are free. Satan is locked up and we are free. I'm struggling. I'm going through some hard times and I pray that God frees me, liberates me and passes my cup of suffering into all those, not just Muslims, but just believers in truth. We with you minister on this. I leave you in peace as I came to my Christian family. Praise the Lord to my Muslim family. Assalamu alaikum to my Hebrew Israelite family. Shalom to my black conscious family. Hotep and to my people in the streets. What's good to you. It all means peace. Thank you for listening. This is the hour of power or brother Sharif. <laughs>